going to be a panel on e-publishing pitfalls for beginners. This panel guides a neophyte through the basics of e-publishing and provide information to give beginners some idea of how to get started, the specific errors to avoid. This is just a few pointers as one hour is not anywhere near enough to learn it all. So it's a jungle out there and it's got big hairy feet. So. My, my name is Patty Holstrand, also known as P.J. Holstrand. I've written three books that actually uh, were self-published, but now I've been picked up by a publisher, so I'll be redoing the whole series. Also, the managing editor of the WA newspaper, uh, previously called Connotations. So I've uh, been into publishing for a long period of time. Uh, 2009, I started publishing other people's books because I was asked to. <laughs> But this experience in publishing, uh, they said, well, we want you to publish our books. And I said, well, books are completely different than magazines and programs and, and catalogs. And they said, well, it's all on paper. Yes, but that's completely different. So uh, I kind of threw myself into it and started publishing other people. And that's how I got started. And my name's Terry Smith. I've seen some of you in earlier panels. I write science fiction, normally from a per female perspective. Um, however, this one is written from the male perspective, so don't rule me out just because I'm a female there. Um, and I have an agent who is shopping novels out of New York, so we're just waiting on word from those. And but I did start my first item as an ebook, so we're, we're, well, that's what we're going to talk about. Speaking of which. Okay. I remember back in Leprechaun, we were talking, and I said, said, you know, need to bring your books. And you said, well, I don't really have anything printed. And said, she said, because, you know, everything she'd been selling has been on ebook. And I said, right, that's just terrific. Yeah. But how is that going to help you sell at, at a convention like this? So we can talk a little bit about that. Because, uh, you know, yes, ebooks are really a necessary thing and, and the paradigm has changed and shifted where it used to be you wanted to print first and then you could go ebooks. Well, it's actually really shifted and now everybody's going with ebooks first. And then it's kind of like afterthought uh, of doing the print book. Do you find that to be the case? I think with the ebooks, it that is a problem. Um, basically because they are available supposedly only online. You have to get a special permission from that publisher to actually say, I'm going to a con. In this, in this case, I'm on, on number five this year. Got several more to go before the end of the year. So I had to get special permission to actually have a print run done so I'd have something to take to a con because that was an issue. Today's buyers, you either Women are more likely to do it, but download straight to their nooks or they want to be able to go and pick it up and buy it right then. If you don't have it on the table, they'll go to the next table. And that is an issue with ebooks. So in this case, you do have, have to have special compensation, no matter, and permission, regardless of who you get published through. I think we can talk a little bit about uh, the different types of ebook publishers. Uh, because you know a lot of them really cropped up in you know, 2009, 2010, and they they were all going to ebook, and that's that's how they delivered was actually through their website. Um, a lot more romance was done that way, and uh, you know, obviously erotic material and things like that were all from ebooks. And uh, then they, they kind of shifted and have gotten where if you do sell really well. Uh, choose whatever quota they have. They will go ahead and, and print you at a certain a certain stage in your career. They'll say, hey, you guess what? You made, you know, I don't know how many of it. Depends on whatever it is or whatever your contract states. You say 20,000 copies. You, 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 you sold 20,000 e-books, so you're at the stage where we want to actually print you. Um, so it depends on your contract. And there's a lot of different gamuts out there. Um, and you have to kind of decide what you want to do. And the contract is the issue, you know, because uh, you have to be careful when you are going with a small pub e-publisher that you read that contract and you understand what the rules are. You know, uh, the promotions people, 
with my publisher just changed this week. And the new person's like, did you have permission to do that? And I'm like, yeah. My first thing I did was my, it was too small for their regular run. So I had to get special permission to do a run, a smaller run, and be able to take it to the con. And if you violate that, they will drop you. And if they're big enough, they will sue you. So you have to pay attention to who you're going with as an e-publisher and what the contract is and your rights. You have to pay very special attention to when those, how long that contract is for and when you get your rights back. Yeah, rights is, uh, are a different gamut. And of course, you really have to watch what you're doing. Um, but I, I also often say to an author, they say, well, should I go with ebook only or should I go with print? I said, you should go with both. And really, in this day and age, there's really no reason not to. Uh, the printing is so much cheaper than it used to be. And I, I've come from a printing background. So uh, the, the print on demand is a lot cheaper than it used to be. You don't have to have, you know, your garage full of books anymore. Uh, you can do, you know, short runs. That's how I became a publisher. I've done short runs of different books. And I don't keep any more than, you know, three, or three to five copies, really of any one book in my stash at home that I actually fulfill orders for. And then when, you know, uh, every week I'll do an order. Um, and it's always to replenish the stock. And so that way I don't have so many because when I first started, we weren't able to do that. We were doing uh, four up at a time and they weren't one-offs. And so as you have four up at a time, uh, you've written like 20 run, you wind up having all these books and you know, possibility of getting damaged uh, if you take them to the store they get damaged every time and so there's a lot of loss uh, when you when you're working that way uh, with more books that you can possibly wind up having a loss at and of course you've got to count all that inventory uh, so good thing about ebooks is you don't have inventory <laughs> and the bad thing is trying to get somebody going here go buy my book when you, they'd much rather do here, buy my book, because it's right here. So, or it's over in the bookstore. <laughs> yeah, it, it is much more tangible. It's concrete. Uh, they physically like being able to, if they're at a con, being able to see the book, and it's physical. They can they can pot down the money, and they know they're they're getting that they're not having to run home and see whether or not it's on their Kindle or on their computer, or wherever they happen to be their storage for their ebook, Because, you know, nowadays you don't necessarily have to have a Nook or an e-book. Um, I'm sorry, a Nook or a Kindle. You can have uh, your Kindle files actually delivered to you on your own computer. So y all those things can be on your computer and not have to be, or Android. I have, you know, my Kindle files on my Android. So I can read it here, but I can also read it at home on my computer. Uh, and that comes in handy because I've had people who have lost their Kindle, it blew up on them or whatever, they threw in and accidentally dropped it in a toilet or something. And they lost all their files because they downloaded it directly to the Kindle and didn't think about putting it onto their computers. So uh, it's always good to have it on multiple devices. Now, another thing is that some of your e-publishers, when you do buy from the e-publisher, I mean, you are a record. You you have a record of having bought that item, and they will allow you to come back and download it again. For for some reason, you drop your Android. I haven't seen one on this publisher, but other publishers. I not every publisher is going to do that. So you have to be very careful, and you have to look at what again what your contract has, and then also check out that website and what they allow, what they don't allow. I never just send your stuff off and sign a contract with somebody and you haven't even actually gone and checked out the materials that they publish. You know, and if you're able to do that, you know, it's right there on the website. That's why it's ebooks. And you might and you might you're going, why am I getting rejection letters? You didn't check out their website, you might be sending stuff that they have no interest in whatsoever. So you have to be very diligent on the publishers that you do go for. It is a matter of not wasting your time or theirs. 
uh, you know, that's why they have submission information online. Uh, and follow the submission. Because if you don't, then you can automatically get kicked out. There's 20,000 people after you. So you've got to put your best foot forward and follow directions. Uh, how many people here are actually trying to publish an ebook or an e story? Okay. Is everybody else just kind of here because you want to know more about this e okay, about this ebook thing? Okay. I was trying to figure out where everybody stood here. <laughs> okay, so she's she's got you have a more healthy interest in what you're looking for. Um so have most of you are, are users then, or your readers. We of course we love you, uh, and we want you to continue to do read ebooks as well as. And you know, I'm not sure how many people really read more ebooks than they do print books at this point. Fifty fifty, okay. So you guys still like the touch and feel of the printed book, okay? Even the young, the young man in there, you still like. Okay, so the younger generation is really going towards obviously, you know, all your androids, and, and they're the only ones who can actually look at it. <laughs> it's too small, but uh, that's the kind of generation. Seniors actually, uh, there's more. The, the number of when they started doing ebooks, the seniors went crazy with them. First of all, they can fit more on their devices. Okay, fit more books. Uh, they're becoming more transient. In other words, they're moving from their houses and going out on the road, or moving away from their house that they've had for 50 years and moving into something smaller. So they can't keep all the books, physical books that they've already had all these years. So they're going into digital format because of that. And also because of the fact that they, uh, they can see it. They can do, you can adjust just the level of the, of, the, of the type. And so they can read it you know, a lot easier for them. You can't do that with these. I, mean, I do, all, of course, all my writing on the computer. But you know, when it comes time to put the computer away and I want to read, for some reason, I still want to reach out and touch paper. I want to hold that book. You know, I have a Nook. Actually, I bought it from my mother. You know, and uh, she she keeps promising to use it. <laughs> so, but uh, we both still go for the the paper. We like, I guess, we like the feel of it. Yeah. Don't you think that is something? Uh, it's not just the touchy feely of it, but there's something cozy. Yeah. The word. Yeah. You really can't curl up to this, really. Okay. Um, although you can see if it's, if you're you know hiding in the dark and you actually can illuminate things, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but you still want to be able on a you know cold winter night, not here in Arizona, obviously, but somewhere in the United States, uh, being able to curl up and actually read a physical book, uh, and so. I don't think they're really going anywhere. Uh, I do see that. You know, I was just talking to uh, you know the other uh, author guests of honors, um, and they see it going to uh, that the mass market books are actually going going to go away, and we're going to be stuck with the trade book as well as your hardcovers. Hardcovers are not going in away because. The margins are so good for the publishers. So the, you're going to see two things. You're going to see the the hardcover continue, especially for companies, fantasy companies that are used to it. And then you're going to see trade paperbacks. But you're not going to see the mass markets anymore. I don't know where to take that one. <laughs> <laughs> The numbers it really has to do with the numbers. How many? Uh, is, it takes more uh, of those trade paperbacks to be able to make the same margin they do with the hardcovers. 
Um, now, it doesn't make much sense to me being in printing business because I know that the more books you print, the less it is per piece. So I, I argued with him last night during dinner. And like, that doesn't make sense in my printer mind. You know, why would mass market books not be making uh, a killing, really? It's, it's a paper is uh, more coarse, not, not, not anywhere near as good. Um, but the thing is that people, it's, it's a matter of what people are preferring. They're preferring the white pages and the type that's easier to read on those white pages than they are with the course books that, that are a little bit darker you know, in color and hue. So if you look at your mass market book, it's either a little bit yellow or it's, or it's got, it depends on which ones, yeah. It's, it's, it's not bright white. And so you got the, the, uh, the glare on the eyes. It's, it's easier to see this book than in, on, and the type than it is for those. Also, those books. Yeah. They made a lot more. Because people do like that white page. Now, where it's going to go as far as the market, you know, because when it comes to shipping costs, those, hard, those hardback books, that's what kills them on that, is not so much the cost of the paper, the cost of the shipping. And so that's one of the issues. I guess we can wait and see, because that's one thing about the e-publishing business and, uh, and the paper business is it has been changing so much in just the last couple of years. And everybody a few years ago predicted everybody would be on nooks now. Well, we're not. We're still wanting, the, we're still wanting paper, and so we're still wanting some, some of us still want some hardbacks. You know, I kind of reserve that for if I really like that book and want to keep it on my shelf forever, I'll go buy the hardback. You know, but if it's one that, well, yeah, it'll stay there for till the next mandatory clean out, then it's going to be paperback. Well, I have a theory for that. I have a theory for that. Having gone to conventions for over 20 years, okay, you guys collect these books, okay, and the hard covers you're collecting, and you're keeping those. If I'm going to get an autograph, it's usually one of being the hard covers I autograph and I keep. I've moved from my house to several apartments, and, and only those that are hardcovers and also those have been autographed are the only ones that are staying with me. Everything else is you know, transitory. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to blog them in the boxes anymore. <laughs> and, uh, I started reading, you know, paperbacks in high school. You know, I was not a reader until I finally got bored one summer and asked my brother for a book, and he gave me The Hobbit which led to the Lord of the Rings, and I jumped straight from Tolkien to Heinlein. And I'm going, I found what I like to read. Now I love to read. And it's been, his, his library from that point on was, you know, it's like I was in there plucking, stealing stuff off of his library, ended up in my library. Of course, every time I've moved, I've lost books. I don't know where they go, you know, and now I have, you know, you move out, eventually the family moves back with you. So it's like, okay, got to clean out again. I have a row of hardbacks, and you know, I get a collection of those, and then down the bottom are the paperbacks that I just couldn't part with. So, you know, I, that's what I collect is the hardbacks. And now, of course, I'm doing the E. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> how do you autograph an E? Yeah. There's a way, yeah. There's a way. Uh, we were at yeah. Kendall's. Phoenix Comic Con, and one guy had his book there, and he had bought one without the design, and he was having his favorite authors sign the cover. So you open up the cover, his nook, and it had all these autographs in it. So that's one way, you know, you 